Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. I want to welcome first-time guest, Shannon. And also Stetson, I think you're both on together at the same time. Yeah, yes, I believe we are. So. Hey there, Stetson. I haven't met you, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But I have met Shannon, and she is just, she's just fun to talk to, and having a good time with it. And uh, you know, I'm kind of dealing more with the controversial part of it. You guys are going, look at this. This is <laughs> this is great. This is fun. So, Shannon, why don't you start with the story of how this all occurred? And by the way, I was introduced to this from Dr. Leo Rukaby. He's the council member of the Society for Physical Research. You can find him at rukaby.com. And he said, Connie, it's this is in the uh, Newsweek. You have to check it out. Have you seen it yet? And then I saw it and I went, oh my gosh. And by the way, I believe it's true. After that happened, I got a hold of Shannon and Shannon told me the story. And now you get to tell it on coast. <laughs> okay, so... Um, the trip just started out as an anniversary present. My husband um, booked this, and, you know, surprised me with this bucket list, list um, train ride through Durango to Silverton, and then it comes back from Silverton to Durango. So we took the train ride, and we're looking at all the beautiful scenery, and um, we stopped in Silverton. Then once we got back on the train, we were leaving Silverton, and we came to kind of an open area in the mountain, and I asked him to help me look for elk. And we were the last two seats on the back open-air gondola of the train, so we're looking for elk, and all of a sudden, my husband says, um... I think I see something moving. And I was like, what is it? And he was like, I don't know. It looks like Bigfoot. And when he says that, the guy that was sitting right beside him, his name is Brandon. Brandon grabs his cell phone and starts recording video. And I was trying to grab my SLR camera to be able to zoom in to see exactly what it was. And so I grabbed my camera, and I couldn't find him in the in the mountains because he blended so well with the stage. And so I'm zoomed in as much as I can in the pictures, and I snap a couple of pictures. And about that time, the train goes around a mountain, and so it's out of view. And so that pretty much sets the scene for the video and the photos. So Stetson, what what uh, what is your perspective of this story? Um, pretty spot on accurate. You know, when she asked me to help her look for elk, I was pretty excited about it because you know it's hunting season um, here in this part of the country, and so <clears throat> excuse me, when the temperatures fall, you know the elk go into rut, and so they start mating. And so it's really exciting to see it. Uh, we've seen it a couple of different times in um, SD, SD State Park in Colorado, right outside of the Rocky Mountain National Park. And so we were looking for elk, and I, I see it moving. And, you know, I'm trying to reason with myself, what am I seeing right now? What is this, you know, creature? And, um, you know, I told my wife, like, hey, something's moving. She's like, what is it? And, you know, again, trying to be a rational adult, I can't think of anything it looks like. And so I was like, well, it looks like Bigfoot. And it kind of started a ruckus, you know, around us. Um, like she said, Brandon immediately, living in the 21st century, pulls out his cell phone to record it. Um, I was kind of still in between 1989, 1991 uh, time frame in my mind because I'm not thinking the power of the technology in my pocket, you know, to record this 
creatures walking the ever elusive, as I like to say. And so, you know, it was really surreal for me to see, you know, something that I had never known of its actual existence and, you know, had never seen any physical evidence of, of it being real. So tell me again, you were seeing it, and but but Brandon was shooting it, but that was your voice that we heard saying, hey, give me that, I'll show you how to shoot it or something like that? That was, yeah. so it was my husband's voice who very calmly, as everyone says, uh, points out the ever elusive creature and then it's me saying where is it because I even with my zoom camera and it zoomed all the way in I couldn't see it in the viewfinder because he had you know bent down and I was having a hard time figuring out in that terrain because he blended in so well where he was actually at and so it was my husband telling me hand me your camera and I'll you know try to find it for you and, and Brandon is the one recording the video. Okay. And then what happened? Did he, he just sent it to you later? Is that how you got yeah, it? Yeah. So, so on, the train ride back is about three and a half hours. So once that event happened, you know, everyone around us, um, once, once they, you know, the commotion started kind of um, the couple behind us, um, stood up, and then there was a couple beside Brandon that was kind of looking too, and they may have gotten a glimpse of the creature, but they didn't have their cameras out to video either. But we all just kind of talked about it, you know, the whole train ride back, discussing, kind of going through all the scenarios that everyone online is you know what is this what did we actually see was this bigfoot was this um a publicity stunt was it you know a hunter all of that and so we're all kind of watching the video looking at the pictures and just you know discussing it the whole time and none of us thought it was a hunter in a ghillie suit you know none of us saw a weapon um and I know from that time, uh, both season was over, so hunters would have had rifles or they would have had their orange on, you know, for the hunting laws in Colorado, um, and none of that was occurring. And then um, we, there's one person that works on the train that comes back to light the lanterns, and we were sitting right beside that. So when he came back there to do it, we decided to, you know, ask him, does the train, you know, put on publicity stunts like that for the train guests, you know? And he was like, no, we don't do that. And then we were like, well, we saw Bigfoot. <laughs> and he's like, what? And we showed him the video. And then he proceeds to tell us an experience that he had where he was out in the San Juan Mountains uh, snowshoeing one time and he saw tracks that weren't snowshoes and that were bigger than that and he couldn't explain it and then you know that he's had other experiences such as that you know in the mountains in Colorado as well so we were kind of like okay well it wasn't the train that put it on you know so then it just kind of got more real in our heads you know after weighing it out, all the options, I guess. And then, um, there were all the people around were so excited. So they were all um, asking Brandon to send them the video. There were probably, I think he might have sent it to like seven families or something like that. But he sent it to us specifically because it was my husband's voice on there. My husband was the one that pointed it out. So, Brandon was like, well, y'all are the one that saw it first, so, you know, he shared it with us. And as you've said, too, uh, Brandon, is, he, he shot it, but he he's his own guy. He's like, look, I'm doing my own thing. I don't want any credit for this. I don't want to be known for this. I don't want to be the guy known to have shot that. And he is just staying private. And I get that. I totally understand that. I totally get that. I had contacted him 
contacted him to ask for a little bit more to learn a little bit more. Uh, I think somebody might have their radio on. So if you do, if you can turn that down, because we can hear the echo. If one of you, maybe Stetson, you might have yours on. I'm not sure. Uh, if so, turn that down and, and uh, we won't hear the delay. But when I did contact Brandon, you know, he just said, hey, I don't want to be known as that guy. If you've got any questions, so I can answer them. And it just nice as can be. He's his own guy doing his own thing, having his own adventures. And he's like, yeah, here you go. And this is it. Here's the video. And I totally respect that and understand that where some people think, oh, well, he might be behind it. You know, no, I don't I don't get that at all from him. He seemed like a very honest, genuine guy just doing his thing and on another adventure. And this is what you guys were doing. You're a systems uh, uh, analyst and your husband in Stetson is a 10 year air force veteran. It's not like you guys are wanting to make up something and say, Hey, let's go on our 10th anniversary and see the scenic fall colors on the train ride from Durango uh, uh, to Silverton. And you guys, by the way, are from Cheyenne, w Wyoming. You guys are just uh, celebrating life and life together and looking for elk and enjoying the colors. And then, you got a great surprise. <laughs> right. And Brandon is a very nice guy. And we actually didn't, you know, he sat beside my husband the whole time, but we actually didn't talk to him the entire train ride to Silverton. You know, we're enjoying our anniversary, just the two of us. And so we didn't really even speak to Brandon because we didn't know him. And he was kind of on his own little journey, you know. And so afterwards, that's when we got to know Brandon and we, you know, talked to him about the video and all about what we just experienced. And then we got to learn a lot about him and his travels. And he's just on a, I think, like a year-long um, travel experience across the southwest states and just doing all kinds of adventures and taking pictures. And he just kind of wanted to his own privacy, like you said, you know. And Stetson, is there anything else you want to add to what was happening? Not directly. Um, my wife's pretty much summed up everything to a very reasonable, exact time frame and exact, you know, imagery and an example of what we saw and, you know, the exact context of what we were experiencing. Uh, so, and some people stay in the ghost world all their lives, but then, but me, I'm like, okay, what else is out there? Oh my gosh, alien, what, what's this? Aliens, alien abduction, alien um, uh, hybridization project, remote viewing. You know, you go on and on, you keep learning and learning because you want to learn more. And if you are in that world, and not everybody is, right? But if you are, you just want to to learn more and you see how it all connects and at one point i was introduced to the bigfoot world and let me tell you once you're there that's where you're going to stop for a while because it is fun it's exciting there's so many different things to it and facets to it that the other ones don't offer and basically because you can have a re you can have a relationship with these they will talk with you uh, due to the Native American background uh, with all their knowledge of it, they call it mind speak. But if you're in the UFO world with aliens, they call it telepathy. But you get into it deeper and deeper. If they like you, they're going to show themselves. And if you continue to stay active in that world of going to have a relationship with the areas that have the activity and the ones that are out there and they like you, you will have, grow a deeper and deeper relationship with them. And it's amazing, the stories that we all hear here on Coast to Coast, right? You know them. You've heard them. And I know there's a bazillion researchers out there right now, some that I've learned from that are listening tonight and they believe it's a hoax and others do not. It's like, no, it's for real. And you wouldn't believe the direct messages I get where people don't want to say either or except directly messaging me. They don't want to get into the fight and the argument, which is a shame that that happens. It can be fun to some people, I guess, but it gets, I don't know, it gets kind of old to me at one point with all the fighting. Uh, and, and why, you know, let's just listen to each other, debate it, go back and forth. That's all fine. But in the Bigfoot world, it is just so exciting because you can actually see them. You can, you know, I, I think you can see them more and have a better relationship if you take the camera away. And I think a lot of people would uh, give you a thumbs up on that. But, you know, you you can capture them. 
And this, I believe, is an absolute genuine capture. And I think it's absolutely amazing. And if you go to our website, you're going to see the shots that our couple that is here with us tonight, uh, Shannon and Stetson Parker, are, are talking. It's it's Shannon's pictures that we got here. The video that was shot, Brandon, you can also find it within our website under a Tim uh, Banal has an article on it. And you'll see the video. Of course, the video is all over the place. Again, it was Dr. Leo Rukaby. You guys got to check him out. He's the one who said, Connie, did you see this? You can, And again, you can find him at Rukaby dot com to learn more about him amazing guy he's like it, it was it was you know it's different because it's in newsweek i'm like what because because we see these all the time but i want you to take a look at the video take a look at the pictures and keep in mind when you see videos that other people have put up there after they put up a filter and they've done this and they've done that or they've pulled out their own still shots got to remember with still shots and especially in the colorado area and, and look at that terrain, by the way, you know, all these things you have to look at the time of day, the shadows that are happening, the movement of this thing. So look at the movement, not just the still shots and be careful what people put out there because they put different filters in there and they stop it where they want to stop it on a frame. And they talk about that either to the point of it's real or to the point that it's not. So you got to remember these things, keep an open mind and just trust your own gut. If your gut says it's a hoax, okay, move on. We're done, right? If your gut tells you it's not, well, let's learn a little bit more about it. Now, I'd like to say as a researcher, what I saw when I first saw it, it was absolutely amazing to me. I was like, oh my gosh, they caught one. They caught one. And what I loved about it is that it it seemed to be as it was walking and then oh there's a train i need to hide wait a minute i'm in the area that's very open what do i do well there's a bush over there takes a few steps gets to the bush and then squats down i love the squatting part because you really see an angle of it that really shows muscles and the head and the neck you know right onto the shoulder the, the no neck basically and you see it just hide away and go away. And when people say, how, how come we can't see these things? Well, it, it, if you look at it uh, in, in the video, you can see how it blends in perfectly. Now, a lot of people said, no, it looks like the hair is off. It's got too much hair. It, it looks old. It looks young. It looks this. I think it's I actually think it's a juvenile uh, with 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 the blonder hair. Uh, that's me. Uh, somebody said. The feet are too small to be a Bigfoot. Well, it's really kind of hard to tell in the picture, but if it's a juvenile, that would match. And by the way, juveniles also run out on their own. That's what always causes a lot of the havoc and the problems from our research and my research. And all of that, all that I'm saying is my opinion right now. It's my opinion, my thoughts, and I counted how many I have actually seen before. And I, I, I have five that I've actually seen before. And you know what? They all look different. And if anybody knows Dennis Full, love Dennis Full. Thank you, Dennis Full, for being in my life. You're absolutely wonderful guy. Uh, the, the biggest guy a part of Erickson Project, or you might know, is the Pancake House. And he has uh, showed me areas, and, and he has taught me so much. And I remember asking him at one point about one of the ones I saw and the ears of it. And uh, Jason Frank showing me these things as well. And, you know, he said, Connie, I because I said, maybe that's a dog, man. He was like, or maybe they just all look different. And you know what? All the ones I saw did look different. One of them that I actually got a picture of myself of in the backside looked like the Patterson-Gimlin film that they got. And uh, But the other ones all looked very different. And this one, to me, picked up on one that I saw uh, that looked just like that, where I was like, oh my gosh, what was that? Because it had a lot of hair like that. I still think you're seeing a lot of shadows. And when when the film stops and you have, have a still picture, you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to see certain things. Remember, there's going to be pixelation. This is far away. And we're going to be talking and finding out more about the distance 
and what we and the speed of the train. So that's coming up for you. But I just wanted to say, take a couple other looks at this. When people say, oh, a Bigfoot would never walk like that. And these are people saying it that have never seen a Bigfoot. <laughs> so it's like, how can you say that? But, oh, look at the way they're walking. It's more like a human. Well, I'm going to tell you, even the pads of a Bigfoot, uh, it's... I'm going to I'm going to play a sound for you here if I can find my other eraser. OK, somebody had said to me at one point, this is how they they sometimes when you're around them, you'll hear this. Now, I got two erasers, but they're not like the erasers when we were younger and we would clean the chalkboard. But remember when you would clean the chalkboard and then you had to hit the erasers together to get all the chalk out. That exact sound a lot of people hear. And I remember somebody telling me at that one point, and and lo and behold, we were all out on an outing at that point. But lo and behold, the next day morning, very early, I heard that and it went across uh, uh, where I was. It went from one location hearing that sound and I'll try it again with this but it went like this and at that point to me my theory was oh that's it running that's its feet and from then on when other people said I heard this like flip-flop sound which is very similar to that when you walk with flip-flops and you get that flip 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 I think it's their feet I think that's them walking so now when it comes to the walking as well you're in the Rockies. It is called the Rockies for a reason. It is rocky. And there are sharp rocks. Take a look at the train and the pictures. Sharp rocks everywhere. You have to be careful. Even in the best hiking boots, you're going to get some rocks that go right up into your boot, no matter how good they are. It is, you've got to be careful because it's not flat either. And it's not con- continuously choppy. You got to look where you're going to, to walk. And it looked like to me that was even doing that. It was like, oh, no, wait minute there's a train let me let me get over here let me find a spot to to hide and it it does a like a double step and then you'll see and and in the still shots you'll see this too the leg looks like it comes up weird and some people say well that's how people walk in a suit and that's why it looks so weird but actually when you when you see footprints from bigfoot and what we believe to be bigfoot prints not only do they walk in a straight line, and I actually see that happening in the video, but also you, you don't see, they don't slide their feet. When you see footprints, you never see that the toes are dragged. The only one time I saw that in what we believed were big footprints, and they were huge, we saw that in snow that was about four to five feet deep. Okay, then I can imagine there's going to be a little bit of some uh, some toe drag, but you don't normally see toe drag. Ask your researchers out there. And so in doing that, it's more like a march and a stomp. So their feet go up. And if you watch, look at their legs, they got that march set up and then and they come back down. You can also see that in the Patterson Gimlin film. Now you get past that and it squats down and it's hiding, which I don't think anybody that's trying to do a stunt and going, hey, look at me. I don't think they're going to hide after they do all that work to get into that vast little area there. But then what I want you to look at, which most people have never even mentioned, is the head movement. The head movement is something I've not seen either. However, I saw one scale in the mountain once, and the speed of it at one point when it got higher up the mountain, it actually had its arms grabbing a tree and pulling itself up higher and grabbing the next tree with the other arm. And then the right arm would grab another tree and pull itself up. And then it grabbed the left uh, with the left arm. It grabbed another tree and scaled all the way up the mountainside. And it went faster and faster and faster. The head never moved. You could put a hundred books on his head and it wouldn't have come off. But when it got faster and faster, you could see a slur in the arms does that make sense like you would see in the old comic books with superman you could see when superman got faster right and and it 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 did that kind of blur kind of thing that's what i saw with my eyes of these things uh of this one particular one going up the side of one of the mountains in the rockies now this particular one that we're talking about tonight look at the head movement when it squatted down 
it's so fast and quick. No one has mentioned that at all. How can you not mention that? Why isn't anybody looking that far? They're just saying it's not or it is, and they're not looking deeper into it. Okay, I think it's real. So maybe that's why I'm looking deeper into it. But look at the head movement. It's fast. Is that part of the interdimensionalness? Is that something else we should look at to go, wait a minute, they're just as fast in our world, because I've seen that a couple times now. And that was kind of the movement of the head, how, how fast it was when I saw the arm scaling up the mountain at one point. Um, so take a look at the head because it's very similar to the head movement of a fly. Okay. A lot of you watch flies. We've talked about that before. So look at the head movement of the fly. Let's bring back uh, Shannon and Stetson Parker, the couple that was on that train. And let's see if they have anything to answer back with what I just mentioned. Hey, Connie. Um, that's what we thought, too. Like, looking at the head, it was like, what was it doing? Like, the head is going back and forth so fast, and it just didn't look like a person to us. Like, I don't know anyone who, like, would shake their head like that. And then and I think imagine also, being in like, a suit as well to do that. Right. It was just, like, it was completely odd you know, looking to us. And I think like, even with the walk, it's like hunched over, like it has very protruding, like hunch nature when it's walking as well, which was, you know, different for us as well. So you would say, do so do you believe it's real? Do what? Do you believe it's real? I mean, I do believe it's real. And there hasn't been anything that has came out that is like, conclusive to say that it was someone in costume i know like the ghillie suit that's not a thing i've even seen where they've interviewed um one of the manufacturers of a ghillie suit and that person was like this is definitely not a ghillie suit and then i know everyone on i guess twitter we don't really do twitter but twitter or x um automatically went and said it was the expedition company the sasquatch place in silverton and just automatically dismiss the video saying that it's a hoax put on by them however they said multiple times that it wasn't them but you know some of their facebook posts i guess have been a little cheeky about that but i saw an interview that was done recently with um outside online And they went and interviewed the owner of the company, and he said it wasn't them and that he didn't even consider, you know, pranking a train to get publicity. However, he has enjoyed the 10,000 visits to his website, you know, daily (laughs) because of the fighting. So it's like I don't understand why people automatically, you know, said that it was them, you know, just. And they outright said it wasn't. And even, like, when people, you know, go and say it's that costume, it doesn't look anything like the pictures, like, that we zoomed in on. The Like, that costume doesn't look anything like what we saw. And, Stetson, what are your thoughts on that? Um, very similar. I definitely believe in Bigfoot. Um, after seeing it with my own eyes, you know, I've had my fair share of people challenge me and say like, well, I mean, it's impossible. It's, there's no way that's really Bigfoot. And, you know, I always welcome back with, um, you know, if it's not Bigfoot, then what is it? Can you give me a logical explanation as to what it is, what, it, you know, what your opinion on it is? And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a hunter or, oh, it's this. And it's like, mm, you know, and. Some of those, like my wife said, are, are, in my opinion, pretty easily, you know, like ways to disprove their logic with with hunting or ghillie suits. Um, If it is a suit, you know, is is somebody something that somebody bought online? That's an amazing costume, and I would not want to know exactly what they paid for it. I think I'd rather have an actual physical encounter with a bigfoot than pay, you know, a thousand or better for a costume like that. Was the area where you saw it, was it in a vast area, or was it right there next to the depot? Um, It was pretty vast. I mean, I would say we were probably 
two miles or so from Silverton, Colorado. Um, so we weren't terribly too far, but there were no access roads um, in that particular spot. You know, the access roads I had seen um, up to that point were just a couple of them, and they were mostly um, roads that were there in support of the railway itself. Um, but none near where we saw Bigfoot. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM, uh, Coast to Coast AM, uh, Jeff. And how was that to hear your song from years well, ago from the High Rollers? Thanks for that nice surprise um, bumper moment there. <laughs> that was a that's a great memory. That uh, that little song uh, we uh, were a group based out of here in Durango, Colorado, and uh, had some wonderful years. And that little song took us, uh, in addition to kind of being a little regional hit, took us across the the pond, and we had a good time with it. So it was a lot of fun to hear that. <laughs> I, I, it's a great tune. It really is. I was in country music radio for four years, and that is really a good, catchy tune. There's no doubt about it, but I, I like the way what it says as well. But uh, uh, And I like at the end of the video that the Colorado girl is his dog. I think that's really <laughs> cool. But uh, And there's a dance that goes along with it, too. I think that's really cool. I think that's neat. It sure is. sure is. Yeah, I, I got a lot of mileage. A lot of fun. I haven't played it in years. <laughs> well, it was fun to watch you on the video, too. He is the guy playing the fiddle if you guys get to get to see it, and I hope that you get to do it. Now, now, Jeff, we're talking, of course, about the, the Bigfoot sighting, but give us a little bit of information about you and uh, the railroad. Well, just um, first, of, first of all, I, did, I can't go further without saying to uh, Shannon and Stetson, thanks for coming to ride the railroad with us. It was great to have you. And uh, obviously, this was a little different than the trip to yesteryear. You thought you were uh, you were coming on, um, but uh, we were sure uh, sure glad that you came with us. And uh, and kind of the um, uh, the railroad started um, essentially back in 1881 and 82 is when it was built. The line was uh, part of an extension of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Narrow Gauge Railroad, which is a three foot gauge railroad that uh, originated out of Denver back in the early 1870s. And the uh, the railroad had extensive coverage throughout the state of Colorado and also into Utah. And um, and through time, and eventually you know, well into the 1950s, most of the narrow gauge uh, portion of the railroad is long gone. And uh, the only two portions that survive today of the old uh, San Juan extension of the railroad are, are the Durango and Silverton and the line between Chama and Encinito. And so it's uh, it's a very rare treat, and I, I appreciated that um, Shannon called it a bucket list trip. We feel it is for a lot of folks to come up and ride the train. It's a vintage steam-powered railroad. Um, we use locomotives in the 1920s, and most of our coaches, or many of them, are from the 19th century as well as a little bit after that. So it's a very vintage experience, to say the least. And we uh, traverse the Animus River um, canyon all the way from Durango up to Silverton, which is uh, just about 9,300 feet up in Silverton. And the headwaters of the Animus River are uh, just a few miles up above Silverton. So it's uh, it's quite a trip, and it follows the bottom of the canyon to the Needle Mountains in the San Juan Range. And um, I first started there myself uh, initially right out of high school, actually, about 42 years ago. And uh, it became something I wanted to do since I was a, I was a kid. I was from Oklahoma originally, and we spent some time in Durango, and I discovered it, and it was just uh, like home to me there. And uh, my career took me in some different areas uh, away from Durango for some years and then back. And over the last five years, I've been uh, serving as the general manager of the railroad, and in that capacity, I'm enjoying every bit of it. And it's kind of come full circle from 42 years ago, but... Uh, I have to say, in all my experiences, I didn't expect to be able to have a conversation like this. So this is fascinating to me as it is to everyone else. And, and I love that you also know Coast to Coast AM well, and, and here you go. You never thought you'd be on coast either. And there you go. No, life is just wonderful. <laughs> Good things are happening for you. So now, with that particular train ride, I know for sure this is the time of the year, and this was October 8th, but this was the t- this is the time that you go, you take these rides because you're going through the mountains and you are looking at the uh, leaves changing, correct? Exactly. We have a big, uh, a, a big rush of uh, ridership that hits usually from mid-September to early to mid-October, depending, depending on the schedule of the leaves turning. 
And this year it's actually been quite steady for us uh, well into October, um, up to 400, 450 riders a day. So it's been quite a busy October uh, because of the way the leaves have been. Well, uh, Shannon and Stetson, I want you all to hang by a little bit because I just want to get some more questions from him, and then we'll get some more answers from you guys before we start taking the phone calls because I know people are going to want to ask you guys things. And I encourage you guys to ask, uh, you know, just because I believe and, and anybody else saying they believe too, I know there's a lot of you that don't. So if you can call in and be civil, please be civil about it. That's what we want for sure. So we can learn about it because I'm telling you, if it is a hoax, man, I want to, I want to meet that person. They did great. Uh, I really do. And I want to know what they did because they, they have fooled me too. Um, and I'm always open to learning. So all that's fine, but we want to learn a little bit more from you, Jeff. Now that particular, first of all, how fast do the trains usually go? I, trying to get a perspective of where the where the train was, how fast it goes, and and what area that was in after you've seen the video that you can say if it's uh, if it's an area where it's so close to the depot that somebody could easily walk over there. Uh, tell me what you know or what you think of it after seeing the video. Well, from from what I can tell and looking at that, it really appears to be. And, and Shannon or Steph that could correct me or, or make sure and corroborate this, but it, it appears to be a location probably about 12, 10 to 12 minutes uh, out of the Silverton departure station south bound toward Durango. Um, so that would put it, if, if, there, if the train had left right on time around 315, probably somewhere around 325 to 330, depending on, on what time they were making to get down there. Um, the location, and again, I'd, I'd appreciate if they want to corroborate if that sounds correct to them. Um, that's based on what I'm seeing and looking at some other uh, photographs of the area since you and I first spoke, Connie. Um, the, that area is not extremely remote. It is There are county roads and service roads in the general area, but it's not right next to the depot building or right next to the end of track. Um, it appears to be on the east side of the river. Um, I'm going to guess maybe 700 to 1,000 feet. It's hard to tell with the zoom on the camera. Maybe 700 to 1,000 feet across the river um, east of the um, uh, track. You can tell by the, the way the sun sets on the west side, the, uh, the way the shadows look. It seems to be more of an afternoon getting toward evening sun coming down from the west in that spot, which, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and it would be right before crossing the river, at which time, at, when that was taken, I believe the river would have been to the left as uh, toward between the train and the, uh, the siding. And uh, shortly thereafter, they would have crossed a bridge, which would have taken the river to the other side. So that's my, that's my best shot at the location after having seen it. How fast do your trains go? It would have been doing probably somewhere around 12, probably between 10 and 12 miles an hour right there. We have a restriction on the bridge uh, crossing down there, which is 10 miles an hour. Um, generally, the trains average 15. So it could be could have been going about 15, and then it would have slowed down to about 10 for the bridge, depending on exactly where they were. Do you guys ever pay people or not pay people? Do you ever use any people to dress up as Bigfoot and do any type of PR stunts, or do you know of anything like that? We do not. And, in fact, we it's, it's interesting. We've been, through the years, we've been asked to do little kinds of stunts, which included um, uh, fake holdups and Western robberies. And we've not, as an organization, been taken in to put on um, – kind of acts like that unless something is truly an advertised special event. Um, um, we, The thing we're presenting to everybody is really that vintage wilderness experience. And it's funny, a lot of people ask me that, you know, right away, um, was this something the railroad did? And all I can share on that one is if, uh, if anyone involved with the railroad or that knew the railroad was involved in it, that's uh, the company and the organization knows nothing about it yet. Um, it's, it's kind of funny when all this started, I think you said August or excuse me, October 8th was when it was filmed. Um, I'm not sure when this went viral, but it was probably a day or two after it went viral that um, someone came to my office and told me about this. And the first thing I thought was, well, someone must have seen a bear and put a picture online. I had no idea what was going on with this, this video and these uh, still shots. And then I got a call from the New York Post. I think you had been trying to reach me prior to that. 
And uh, then I realized it was something really serious going on. And uh, I started asking questions and talking to everyone around the office and even just through today trying to figure out and piece together what was, uh, what was maybe going on. But I can certainly put that one part to rest that if, uh, if anybody was uh, putting together a hoax, the, the company sure didn't know anything about it. Now, I think you had said at one point years back there was um, something at one of the depots or one of the stops. Yeah, I wanted to share that. Uh, I think it was 12, maybe 12 to 15 years ago, there was a, uh, a vendor store in, in the town of Silverton that um, had a, um, a, a store dedicated to the lore of Bigfoot. And I believe the individual, the individual that owned that store had a, a Bigfoot costume. I don't know what happened. I don't know if that individual is even in the in the country or whereabouts they are. It was quite a long time ago, and at the time I wasn't working with the railroad. Um, so there's been a little bit of some lore of Bigfoot in Silverton, to say the least. Um, and interestingly enough, too, I had just talked with um, someone, a resident from Silverton today, who shared with me that they had heard some days prior to that um, – uh, film being released or shot that someone was in town asking someone in some businesses around town about uh, Bigfoot in general, and they said they were from a production company. Uh, that's just something I learned today in trying to do some snooping around. But I don't have any more information about that. No one seems to know who they were or what it was um, or what they were asking. It was, it was pretty vague, to say the least. But that's about the most I've been able to, to – uh, to dig up so far. Yep, heard a little bit about that one before, um, and I, I, I can tell you that when, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong or whatever. I know I've been around different locations, and and that happens all the time. That kind of thing, maybe because I'm mm-hmm. in that world too. But uh, you hear mm-hmm. that often as well. Doesn't mean that they did anything, but I think that's what the people were alluding to with that—that that it was a production company. Got maybe it. doing something like that. And and if they are, they'd have, you know, I think it'd be smart for them and great PR for them to go, Hey, that was us that, that, that hoaxed you and, and then prove uh-huh. it and show it as well. Uh, you know, cause if it is a hoax, great. I certainly want to know that, but uh, if not, certainly want to learn from it. So uh, before we bring back the Parkers, is there anything else you want to add to this? What, well, what do you think? What do you think after seeing it? Well, you know, I have – it's interesting, you know, when I was um, growing up, I was very much into the lore of Bigfoot and uh, was fascinated by it. I would say that, you know, through the years, I've kind of become – my philosophy is the older I get, the uh, less I know, but the more I understand. You know, I think that uh, I don't categorically tend to be a, a, a believer or a non-believer. I'm more of a skeptic. I, I, I tend to need to see more evidence about things, and I take things kind of uh, lightly at first, and certainly – the company doesn't have a strong position on it uh, officially, and I think that's a good thing. I think we need to let this thing be what it is. I think there are just a lot of folks out there, um, certainly yourself and others, who are far more expert at uh, at Bigfoot than I am. And so uh, I kind of feel that my uh, my opinion about it probably doesn't carry a lot of weight compared to a lot of the people out there looking at this video. No experts, only researchers. No experts. You, you got to have good Research. feedback for that. <laughs> but um, uh, one of the questions somebody had before uh, that I wanted to make sure I asked you, uh, it was commented before that some of the trains were, and they had thought maybe this one was, or maybe years back, that some of the trains you could actually stop whenever you wanted and jumped out because this was kind of in an area that was, it was not walkable to the depot and you know, from the first start of it and the, and the end of it. Right. So it was in an area that the train would or would not stop. I mean, can, can you be on this train and just stop it at any point and get out and do what you want? And that, I think that was probably, probably the thought that they thought they stopped it and then they were able to walk in that area. Yeah, it's just, it's extremely rare that we stop uh, outside of our stations. We do have station stops along the route. Uh, about five miles south of Silverton, there's Elk Park, which is right on the Colorado Trail, incidentally. There's a bridge that crosses the river, and it, it is the Colorado Trail. Uh, and then we have a stop down in Needleton, which is the, kind of the gateway up into the Needle Mountains in Chicago Basin. Very, very popular spot. 
Um, and then on down the line, we have two or three other locations that we stop. These are designated in our timetable as station stops. Um, it, it's not to say if there were a special um, convenience for an individual or somebody that needed some consideration that we wouldn't arrange a unique stop now and then, but it's far from common. Okay, so let's talk to Shannon and Stetson, bring you guys back in so we have all three of you here. Uh, Shannon or Stetson, do you have anything else to say with what Jeff and I were talking about? Um, I I just want to let Jeff know that it was a beautiful train ride, and we enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, We didn't set out looking for Bigfoot. We did, like you said, just looking at the fall colors. That was just beautiful in itself. And I think just, you know, capturing what we captured on uh, camera and video was just kind of icing on the cake to an already beautiful experience. That's great. Stetson, can you say anything to taking the picture? Uh, do you know how far away you think it might have been from the train? Um, I am not certain, but um, our estimate's probably around 300 yards, somewhere around in there. I think he's pretty spot on with the location because, you know, we were at the end of the train, so the train was going around the mountain at that time. So that's why we only got the small glimpse of it, which kind of furthers, if it was a publicity stunt, you know, as people have said, then why wouldn't the other, you know, three or 400 people on the train have seen it? You know, it's just very odd to us that, you know, out of that many people on the train, only, you know, maybe four or five people at most all this you know happen and then I think like some of the people who have been saying that it was the train that put it on um, maybe getting it confused with the Georgetown train that actually does a Sasquatch train ride I think in July and people have like posted pictures like with the conductor and Bigfoot but that's a completely different train ride in itself as well Shannon and Stetson been doing their homework, and now they are, like, known across the world after all this uh, attention that's coming to them now with what they've got. And as well, Jeff Johnson and the train service. It was brought to my attention, you know, in a in a question form of why have we never found a body. And I thought it was an interesting concept. I kind of wanted to bring it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was from a group based on North Dakota called the the She Squatchers. It's an all female. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, good deal. <laughs> hey, She Squatchers, um, how are you doing? Give them a big shout out. They're they're cool. They're cool people. That's right. Um, but they brought up an interesting point and concept that you know maybe the reason we've never found a body um, or a Bigfoot in the wild is because maybe they bury their dead. Um, if anybody listening or anybody that has any insight that's on the show now wants to chime in on that, I, I would you know. I'd like to hear from his thoughts. Okay. Anything else you want to add about your sighting though? What, what do you, how far away do you think as well? I, uh, your wife said like 300 yards. Uh, is there yeah, anything right. else you want to add to that to maybe to where you even think you, it was eight foot or six foot or 10 foot or anything like that? I would say we were roughly, you know, three to 400 yards away. Um, as far as size comparison, you know, goes of the, how tall Bigfoot was. It's hard to say. Um, definitely, I believe, well over six foot. But, you know, the width of its body mass, the length of its arms, the way that it was just lumbering on the hillside and not doing a, a flashy, hey, look at me uh, motion, just kind of, in my opinion, it kind of leads to the validity of, you know, the possibility it is Bigfoot. Um so, but as far as the size comparison, it is hard to say at that distance. Okay, and um, I think Jeff, you had something to say. You were going to chime in there. Well, I was saying I, I don't. I think we've covered it pretty well, actually, and I appreciate that uh, that Stetson and Shannon uh, kind of corroborated my thoughts about what the distance uh, was um, there over the uh, over the river. Um, and I, I did note it was interesting that they said they talked to one of our trainmen who had uh, 
mentioned something about uh, experiencing something hiking uh, at one point. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. I had the the reaction among employees has been pretty mixed as it would be probably across any uh, cross section, mostly skepticism with some other folks who uh, who do probably you know feel strongly about it and believe. So it's really interesting. Let's go east of the Rockies. Let's talk to Mark out of Kentucky. Hey, go Big Blue. How are you, Mark? Welcome uh, to Coast to uh, Coast fine. AM. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I would like to ask your guest if they noticed as Bigfoot was walking, if the arms were hanging below the knees and they could actually see his arms moving back and forth because that would demonstrate that it was an actual Bigfoot rather than someone dressed in a costume. And, and Mark, say, before he answers that, before he answers that, Mark, what did you think? Do you think real or no? Uh, yes, I'm a believer. I, I'm, I'm definitely a believer. Okay. Go ahead, Stetson or Shannon. Um, I would say, you know, seeing seeing him move and kind of, you know, walk, um, the arms were definitely longer than anything I had ever seen before on any creature of any size. Um, you know, standing straight up uh, at full length, you know, the fingertips pretty much came down right around to the knees itself. Um, so, yeah, I would say the arms were, were pretty well extended, uh, longer than anything I had ever seen on any creature any system. Yeah, that always makes a difference for sure when people are looking at that. Let's uh, go wild card line number three, talk to John out of Florida. Hey there, John. Welcome. You're on the air of Coast to Coast AM. Hey there, um, Tony and the Parkers and Jeff. I just um, I had an experience. I'm 62 years old, but I grew up in Washington State. I'm a Whidbey Island. And, um, when I was a kid, I was in the Scouts, and we went camping up in Mount Baker, and Mount Baker is notoriously known as a Bigfoot sighting area. And we were camping up there overnight. And uh, I remember uh, in the middle of the night, we heard a rustling and it woke us up. But we didn't uh, dare go outside of the tent. Thought it might have been a bear. But uh, in the morning, we smelled, I mean, the scoutmaster best described the smell. It was an awful smell. It smelled like... He said it smelled like for like forty wet dogs. I mean, it literally, it just it just took your breath out. It was so smelly, whatever was there. And he said that that definitely wasn't a bear because the the, the marks, the print marks, looked like human print marks, and they were big. They were like, uh, you know, wider than humans and longer. So it definitely wasn't was not a a bear. Now, uh, my question, I am a believer in Bigfoot since I was about that age. I remember that experience, and I do think that those creatures exist. My scouting experience, we had Navajo Indians who were part of our scouts. One one young man said that they believe, that Navajos believe that it's a shaman, a, a bad shaman that is what the Bigfoot are. But um, the Bigfoot you have in your picture, it's, it's interesting because he's got some real dark, uh, either some dark coloration around his eyes or it looks like he might have stole the backpacker's uh, sunglasses or something. <laughs> some John Lennon ones, right? Some John Lennon ones. <laughs> yeah, I saw that picture. I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. It looks, it looks like he's got some real dark shadows under his eyes or something's going on there. I don't know what that is. But um, I'm, I'm definitely a believer in, in, in that after, you know, my experiences as a kid. So you believe that the video is real, authentic? Well, I I, I don't know, but it's it, it's definitely. I mean, somebody can't be that big. If they're wearing a suit, I mean, a human cannot be. Uh, there's not very many humans eight feet tall or you know over seven feet tall. So um, I, I just don't. I just don't see it. I just don't see that that's possible. So, you know. Do you believe it's eight foot tall because of your uh, Boy Scouting experience? Just by looking at the body shape, that picture is kind of 
it's kind of hard to, but, but, you know, if you're on a train and you're 300 yards away, that thing is still, you know, uh, it has a human shape of a head. Like, uh, my professor in college would say that it could be the Neanderthal, you know, the, just like, just like, uh, the, the creature that's in lake, in the lake over in Scotland, you know, that it, it might have never, uh, you know, that, that creature survived because it, it was meant, you know, with the perfect conditions. Could it be that, uh, perfect conditions may have allowed these creatures to survive? Like, uh, could it be a Neanderthal? Because Neanderthals are supposed to be over seven feet tall. So I, I'm thinking that if they're real, there's got to be an, an explanation to it. So like uh, that, it must be something like a, like a, something like, like Nessie, you know, that a freak, a freak thing that, that survived that shouldn't have, that wasn't supposed to survive, I guess. Well, thank you, John, for your call. Does anybody have anything to say with the uh, dark eyes? Stetson or Shannon or Jeff? I, I think that we have heard everyone making fun of us for that and saying, you know, <laughs> good job, guys. You got a hunter with sunglasses on. Yeah. I that. think my pictures really don't do it justice. Um, and I know that, you know, the pictures are super grainy and all that, but it really did not look like sunglasses to us. I know that the picture kind of looks like that, but for me, it just looks like you may, maybe like a dark shadow from like deep sunk eye sockets. And the um, brow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's just like kind of a shadow over there. Cause even if you're like really looking at the photo, it's, I mean, it's really grainy, so it's really hard to tell, but it doesn't appear like there's a line going across for sunglasses or, you know, even ears to say where the sunglasses would be at. Yeah, they're like monocles that can go in each eye, right? Weren't they monocles back in the old days? They put those in. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I go back to the shadows. And, and the time of day, did you say it was around 3.30? Yeah, I mean, I, I will um, verify what Jeff was saying. That is about exactly the time because, you know, we can look back at the time stamps on um, our photos and the video. So he's pretty accurate at the timing on that. Does anybody have an idea what? on the temperature? Sorry, sorry. Oh, I, I will tell you, it was warm in Silverton that day. So it was probably, and I know warm is relative, but for us living in Wyoming, it was like 70 degrees in Silverton that day. So to us, that's pretty warm, you know, in the Rockies with the sun out and all of that. So, you know, if it was someone in a costume, they were sweating. They were burning up. <laughs> they were sweating right. like a dog. Because, you know, it's true. I mean, even on cooler days, because you're in that much closer to the sun and then the elevation and just the mountains in general, that sun baking on you is hot. I mean, right. oh, man, it just beams on you. That's why skiers have beautiful tans from Colorado yeah. and, and beyond, right? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I know we've got some more phone calls. I don't know if we can take one. Maybe we can take an, uh, I don't know if we can hit one really quickly or not. Let's try it. East of the Rockies, Glenn. I'm Nashville, Tennessee. Glenn, if you can make it quick, we'll take your, your question. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I wanted to ask uh, if there was any evidence uh, on this sighting that this was a subterranean type uh, uh, creature or whatever you'd like to call, call it. Uh, it's been reported by some people, you know, that, that uh, the big feet uh, can just disappear into the ground and, uh, was there any evidence of that, did it, or did they see it? In uh, what way did they first uh, uh, recognize it there? So, yeah, when you all first saw it, was it? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Stetson. So real quick, you know, when I saw it, it was it was walking, um, and you know, again, we were at a pretty far distance from it on a moving train. Uh, so when I did see it. It kind of squatted down shortly after I called it out, pointed out, hey, look, there's something moving. It, it looks like Bigfoot. Um, it didn't seem like it was really trying to disappear into the earth. 
um, as much as it was just kind of squatting down, blending with its environment, you know, as a subterranean creature. Well, I tell you what, when it cut off, I was, you know, that's when I was watching the head move like a, a fly and be like, wow, look at that head. What is it doing? You know, it's looking around, um, hidden behind the bush. Uh, it, it, it cut off at that point. So I guess you all got out of range at, at that point. But man, I wish we could have got more. Man, it was so good. But you, you guys, great job. Thanks. I'm so glad that Brandon got it uh, and gave it and shared it, you know, and I'm so glad that you guys also got some still shots and I'm so happy that you all have come to share that with us. Um, I really do appreciate that. And Jeff, the same with you. Thanks so much for staying awake and uh, all of you are first time coast to coast guests. And we just appreciate that you guys have come and shared your story and your knowledge and your education. Thanks so much. The coast mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.